welcome to another episode of the Surgecast Season 4, Episode 5. We are so excited as the season is about to start, and we have some lovely guests joining us in the next couple of weeks, um, and we're super excited about the one that we are going to talk to today. But first, we have a couple of words from our sponsors. Yeah, so this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, recently, I've been learning hockey a lot, and I know for y'all, hockey is your therapy. However, it doesn't have to be your only form of therapy uh, because BetterHelp exists. Um, I personally used BetterHelp about a year and a half ago, and it was a fantastic time. I grew a lot, learned a lot about myself, and coming out on the other side, i uh, very thankful that I did it and very happy with that decision. Um, so if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Uh, it's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Uh, talk face-to-face -face like this, have chats, talk over the phone, a lot of different options for you. Uh, so just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. One or two sessions, you don't think they're the right fit. Easy enough, you can move on to the next one. So rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash THPN today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash THPN. Thanks. And now back to your reg regular scheduled programming. <laughs> and a great word from our sponsors. But hey, everyone, I'm Kat. I'm Bailey. I'm Zach. And it's the search cast. We're back and we are so excited. It's guys, the countdown is on. I think we were down to what? Svechnikov days away. Uh, yes. So I think if we're when Maybe this a drop less now, I think we're at 35 now when this comes out. So yeah, we're pretty close. How are you guys feeling? Something I was talking to somebody else about the other day was like, so, so football just started last night and that is one stepping stone out of the way for hockey season returning. And I can, it, let me just tell you guys, I am thrilled. Could not be I more thrilled. I'm just ready, ready for it to be here so I can actually talk about games instead of just trying to pull content out of thin air. So I'm mm -hmm. just I'm, I'm actually ready for the actual talk to some hockey instead of possible PTOs or how will the lineup <laughs> work tonight? It's like, no, it's just this is how the team did. This is who we have on the roster and we're going to yep. go. So, yeah, I'm just I'm kind of ready for the summer to be over, but you know, mm -hmm. you know, training camp, training camp is soon. We have the prospect showcase, then preseason. So we're, and the thing is, the Hurricanes put a video of them painting the ice. Mm -hmm. You, you just, you can, you just know it's, it's go time. So oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready. How about you, Cat? How do you feel about us being so much closer? To hockey well, season? we just went through our calendar because, like, now I have to start planning things around hockey games, and we're like, <laughs> we thought, we and go. I thought the summer would be more chill. It it is has not been at all, uh, which I don't mind. Um, but now it's going to be even more so, like crazy, because now hockey's back. You got to factor mm -hmm. that back in. So um, I'm very excited, um, and it even felt more real because they just released the community preseason game mm -hmm. um yep. they put tickets out for that so for anyone that did get the email um you should check it out it's i believe I it's 10 i know it's 10 dollars to get to the game at least yeah it's october 2nd yeah so it's 10 dollars for general admission meaning you can sit anywhere um, it's like Which the easy the hurricanes game to get into. Um, you can sit anywhere. Yeah. Um, you can do a hundred dollar glass seats if you really want to see what that experience is like. Um, this is normally the time that my friends, when they can't, they can't afford to go to all of the other games or like, it's more of a special treat that they all get to sit together, especially if they want to sit together lower, lower bowl. Um, this is when they grab those $10 tickets and it's real fun. But I mean, if you want to experience glass, go for it. I mean, I, 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 I am a preacher proponent of everybody needs to experience that at least once in their lives. I have yet I mean, to have that experience yet, but I think it is something <laughs> that everyone needs to. Oh, what, sitting on the glass? Mm -hmm. I sat on the glass for one game and this was, oh, geez, this was early 2000s. And this, I think this was like against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Like this oh, wow. is like. This is pre-Crosby Penguins, too. So, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was fun. I don't remember very much of it, but it was a fun experience. I mean, so my dad tells everything. My dad tells stories. I think last time he was at a glassy, it was when um I don't think it was in actual like professional, like I think it was a maybe an AHL team, but my grandfather was taking photos from the newspaper and they didn't have glass yet. So my dad was leaning there and a puck hit right underneath where he was leaning on like the side. My Not grandfather side thought it hit him. He was like, Oh. Yeah. I think he's dead. Uh, yeah. But it, yeah, so that's a fun little story. My dad was like, yeah, before they had glass. And I was like, oh my gosh, how old are you? Um, but yeah, I mean, well, imagine going back to like was the original six days with like Reese Richard and all those guys. And it's just like, oh yeah, we're just kind of like, you know, just scan the ice with no buckets, no nothing. And there's no glass. Well, so. if you do sit near the ice or even if you're down there for warm ups, like look at how many dings and scuffs are on that glass. Can you imagine if that wasn't there? Oh, uh, wow. yeah. A lot of people, actually, a lot of people would pay more attention so we don't get a puck, <laughs> to, the t- puck to the teeth, I guess. That's so, true. Yeah, you really um, keep your head on a swivel at that point. That's true. And so for everyone, again, you can get those uh, buy the glass tickets for $100. Um, the parking is free. Um, it's general admission. It's not like normal where there's like certain like VIP and general. Um, it's all general admission. Um, and there will be select discounted merchandise options and concessions. So it'll be like you're you're ramping up for a real game. But yeah, and- it's, it's basically just the it's the hurricane staff getting getting into regular season mode for what they need to do. So yeah, hey, everyone has to have at least a practice game to tune. So it's against ready, Nashville. So. so- you might see Brady Shea out there. You might. It's might. gonna be Possibly. weird. Possibly. It's gonna be weird. <laughs> it's, it's um, like, hey, Brady, we don't just sign you, but like, can you just like, we'll we'll save you for the. Can you just stay season. in our locker room, please? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's it, yeah. It's like uh, Stephen Stamkos. You can you can take a break. You you don't need to play this game. <laughs> That's funny. So, um, some other fun things that are happening before uh, the preseason. The community preseason game is, of course, we do have the Carolina Hurricanes 5K coming up. Um, that is sold 20- out, by the way. September mm-hmm. 22nd at 8.30. It's a Sunday. Rise and shine. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> coffee running. and the canes. <laughs> uh, I, mean, hey, I mean, hey, you can get yourself a brunch right afterwards. So there you go. Yeah, yeah and a free beer. And a free get, beer. Get, get, get a little run in and get some, you know, pound some pancakes afterwards. So why uh, not? Right? Yeah. Yeah, so there's fun. I will be there. I will be walking it, but I will be there. <laughs> Run for um, fun? Where's the fun in that? Oh, gosh. My soccer days are behind me. Oh, yeah. My knees are like, no. Um, <laughs> no, please, no. I don't and wanna. then, so, but even before that, they do have the Durham Bulls are hosting the Canes themed hockey night. <sighs> those jerseys are, those jerseys next are weekend, so, September they're 13th. still clean. They're, I they're, honestly didn't like them. I honestly didn't like them. I like last. Yeah. I like last year's better. Last year's were good. I, I don't like, like the printed on look of the of the hockey jerseys. Like, yeah, I, just like I didn't. Well, like I mean, they kind of have to do that because it's a baseball jersey, so they can't really do all that extra stuff. The hockey jerseys did. Mm-hmm. I can. I understand why, but I think the hats are at least really nice. Though. I do like the hats. I do like the hats. It's funny because cool. me and Richie had opposite opinions on that. But well, here, well here's um, my question for you: Who who do you think is going to do the first pitch? Seth Jarvis. I could see Seth Jarvis. Seth that was Jarvis after this answer. big extension and come out would, wearing yeah. that shirt of his. Probably hasn't washed it since then. He did. One hundred percent will be Seth Jarvis because last year was the year it was it was Jordan Martin or summer. This summer has been all about Seth Jarvis. Why would it not be him? I mean, yeah, we had we had a Marty party last summer. Now we're having a Yarvi yacht thing I, this year, I guess. So <laughs> you say Yarvi yacht. You can't say Yarby party. That doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, you say little Yarby instead of little Yachty, little Yarby. Yeah, there you go. We'll go with that then. I, guess. I mean, I mean, he did. I mean, he did roll on a jet ski to announce he's coming back. So why not? Right? No. Um. But yeah. So so can the last bit of last bit of summer and some baseball, some canes. It'll always it'll be fun. They're playing against the Norfolk Tide. So. You've had a couple of things to keep your weekends busy until the actual season starts. Um, and of course we have some other news. It I, honestly, you can tell the season about to start cause we're getting some more like interesting news coming here mm-hmm. and there. And we know that everyone in there right now is of course like yelling at us about what the big news that just dropped is. We are going to get to that, but we also, we still need to touch on things such as, 
we, Darren York was promoted to our associate general manager and the Chicago Wolves GM. That's a big deal. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for him. You know, it's you know huge for him. The fact of how good he is with the amateur scouts and stuff like that. So now he's going to be making, you know, taking care of the roster up there in Chicago with all of our young guys that are going to have up there. See, I mean, the perfect person to pick to kind of make sure that the development side for the Hurricanes future is in good hands. So I mean, obviously happy doing your like, who else would you pick for that? I was going to say that that's exactly where I was headed to. I mean, you hear people in the front office lament about this man and his ability to not only oversee process prospects, but pick them as well. Yeah, um, you, you see how involved he is when, during the draft during, uh, kind of nurturing these prospects into something that the Canes can use. Um, so I, I don't think there would have been anybody else that they would have preferred to hire. Well, for the obviously yeah. there's other people that could have done this job. Yeah. Um, well, especially if you're wanting to get more in touch with your AHL team, like we had the whole like in and out with them recently. And like, mm -hmm. now you really want to, Improve communications. Yeah, that's and cool. so now he's going to be overseeing the day-to-day -day <laughs> hockey operations over there, and like that's just the Canes being like, we're here, we're controlling this, we're so excited for all of these guys, but mm -hmm. we did not have the luxury of this last year, and we're taking full advantage of it right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, also the fact that, too, you know, you got Canes of assistant coaches that are going to be with the team. Like you said, now you got Darren York being the – General manager, so yeah, the Hurricanes fingerprints are going to be all over this, all over this roster. And uh, I just know talking to some people from Chicago, everyone's just really excited for the season to start, and hopefully you see a Calder Cup appearance down there in uh, Chicago. So I'd love to see that come back, especially with how the team looked last season. The only, I think the only team that was worth them was the Bridgeport Islanders by one point. So. And you know, that's not 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 to dog other teams too, because I feel like maybe I shouldn't do this. This is an inspiring journalist, but you know you're bad when you're losing to a team of not signed hockey players. I mean, they're signed. Rentals. Well, well, signed to an AHL team, but they're they don't have any any. At least most of them didn't have any nhl uh, loyalties things like that so that's yeah. honestly i'd be a little disappointed if i was a bridgeport fan but hey to each their own yeah the islanders yeah. fans are coming after you after that one bill you might want to watch out for that one <laughs> i i can hold my own islanders fans watch out you're from long island sit down <laughs> oh, gosh. um so uh there uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway Not so there is that fun we're so excited for Derek York to be uh, for that new position with him that'll be honestly I, I'm just so excited we have an AHL team again it'll be great mm -hmm. um, And but then in unfortunately not as great news it was a little expected but every Canes fan hoped it wasn't the case Jesper Foss is going to be out for this season he underwent neck surgery on August 6th so he's not expected to play. And for many people that are questioning, okay, well, he's been injured for quite a few long time. Like, why did they wait this long for surgery? Next up is, it's crazy. Like, you want oh to try to fix everything yeah. you can before you have to go in there surgically. So I'm sure they were trying to see what they could do mm -hmm. without that last there, step. There, there's Surgery is like an end-all, be-all, kind of last resort thing. You don't want to have surgery unless it's absolutely necessary. And I think... That's the one thing they were trying to avoid with Jesper Faust is, I mean, you've seen players who take really bad hits into the boards all the time, some of which come out of it with neck injuries. And a lot of them don't even require surgery. Um, you sit in a brace for a little bit and it heals on their, on its own. Um, so obviously, you know, with an injury like this with Jesper Faust, it, it was serious enough to require that kind of thing. And, and not to say, I mean, this was a question mark that we'd been looking at in our lineup for a while. I think this is something mm -hmm. that we've kind of been a little iffy, like, okay, he, maybe he won't start the season. What do we do in that kind of case? Now that's looking to be a little more permanent. Um, I do want to say all, all the best to Jesper in, in his healing process. Uh, obviously that comes first and foremost hockey. Of course we are passionate fans. We love watching the sport, but 
there's no sport without the players. So all the best to Jesper in healing and things like that. And I just, I, I hope he's ready for seasons to come because he is a fantastic addition to this team. He's played a fantastic role. Well, he had, well, he had just signed a new deal with us. Like it, we, we were so excited <laughs> off the year he had just come off of when he had just signed that new deal with us. So it's, I mean, there's a reason we signed it. Yeah. No, but, I mean, and the thing too is like, yeah, he, he's out for the season, but I could definitely see the situation where the Hurricanes just go back next offseason. Like, hey, you missed last year with us. Let's run it back for another season or two and just give him another contract. Because, I mean, you're talking one of the most analytically best forwards on the team outside of like a Jordan Stahl. So, not, you, know, not, you, you, want, you, want, you want yes for Foss long term. And, yeah, it stinks the fact that you lose him in the last game of the season against the Jackets. And yeah. that's just, it's, it's just unfortunate how that luck played out. And even at the Seth Jarvis press conference, they were trying to get like updates on Foss. And, and Tulski's just like, I have no update for you on that. I don't know. And, and he's like, and then people are like, he's not that kind of doctor. He's, it's like, he's not a medical doctor. It's like, okay, why, why wait? Why this? Why that? They're like, I'm not a medical professional, Corey. <laughs> but he is an excellent swimmer. <laughs> um, but anyway, about with, with Foss being out, which is interesting. So you're going to be missing that presence on that, um, double Jordan line with mm -hmm. him. Um, uh, but you're also going to be missing him on, was it the power? He was, he was on the penalty kill. Mm -hmm. PK. Yep. He was a PK yeah. guy. Um, solid third line guy could play fourth when needed to as well. He had someone who was really good on the special teams. So that's another body you got to figure out. And then of course, you know, knowing from talking to guys like Corey Lavilla and stuff like that, maybe it's an opportunity for Martin Nietzsche to get his foot back into the PK side of things like he was two seasons ago because him and Aho were really good together. So it's unfortunate how it worked out for Foss, but it might open a door for Martin Nietzsche to get back there or maybe a Roslevic or Robinson or Carrier. So it's just – I don't know. It's it's a sad situation to see, but you know maybe there's potential guys that get step up in that spot because you're really going to need to this year with especially how the roster is. We've talked about it before. It's in a transition, and now it's in even more of a transition when you lose Which, one of your top guys that you really need on the bottom six. And I mean, Zach, you talked about how great of a forward he is analytically, but we're also missing that one key aspect in consistency. Oh, yeah, um, 100%. He was part of one of the least touched lines in Rod Brendamore's Hurricanes team. Um, and now you're looking at trying to find that consistency elsewhere. And I think that's going to be a huge uh, checkpoint on Rod Brendamore's list of things to figure out for the season. Right. Well, the good thing is he's got Jordan Martin up there who's always been consistent for mm -hmm. them, too. Like, you look at Jesper, you look at Jesper Faust. Yeah. You talk about him with Jordan Stahl. We've also talked about the fact that they were also had Nino Niederreiter. And then Jordan Martin. So, yeah, so you're right. The consistency really needs to be there. Like, you're missing that. But luckily, like I said, with Martin, you do get that consistency with him as well. So it's mm – -hmm. The left side is fine. But yeah, now you got to really worry about that right side where now you're looking at a right side that's got Seth Jarvis, Martin Nietzsche, possibly Jack Roslevic, and then it's a combination of Robinson, Mew, maybe someone else that, you know, maybe a Jackson Blake if he comes up, if they want really want to take a look at him too. But that's kind of, I, don't, I would hope you see him a little bit higher than the fourth line. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be very interesting to see how the Hurricanes kind of figure out that right side because – even on that left side, it's also a question mark after Svechikov, who yeah. you really have. Too, Which so. is going to be, I, I think, uh, throwing it back to one of Eric Tolsky's press conferences weeks, weeks, weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, talking about how this is going to be a year for to, that will provide much opportunity for the prospects to step up. So oh, yeah. I think that's especially important now, uh, looking at this situation. It really it opens up... Again, we we talk about, you know, Jesper wasn't projected to miss the entire season until that announcement. Yeah. So filling that spot was always going to be an issue. It was just a matter of longevity and how long we needed to worry about that. that now this is a permanent hole that I think a lot more people are going to be fighting over. It's a treasured spot to sit there and play potentially on a line with the captain, Jordan Stahl. So, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very interesting to figure out how they're gonna maneuver all that around, especially you said with the young guys too. Like, I said, is it Blake? Is it gonna be? Will it be Felix Unger Sorum? Could it be. I want to see it so bad. <sighs> you, you you have to hope it's a third line role because I really don't want to see them 
kind of being a hey, we're gonna put a rookie on the fourth line. In because Brad said he doesn't want to protect guys. He's like, if we're gonna play you, we're gonna play you. So so as we're speaking of what ifs and everything, we do have a little bit of a what if, but not out in the forwards, but in our net, we we do have a couple of what ifs of who's going to be our main goaltender. Mm. Um, we do have a couple. It's going to be interesting. Um, but one good news about one of our goaltenders is Anderson helped Denmark clinch their Olympic berth. That's a really good thing to hear from your. And like I saw videos of them chanting Anderson's name, which is you got it's got to be great because also you coming back. To see it. I, you again, you got to throw well. back to coming back from that like scary like out medical issue like just to be mm. able to come back and do all of this honestly that's like a best case scenario type situation for anderson as you said coming back from something as serious as what he was dealing with blood clotting no joke um especially you know looking at how frequently it happens with goaltenders um and to go and have the postseason that he had which obviously i mean it didn't end in a stanley cup but we had a decent run he comes back and he's lights out for this team goes on to denmark and helps them clinch a, <laughs> an olympic berth like that that's honestly he only allowed I, four shots he stopped 60 out of 64 won all three games started won all three games at against great Britain, goals japan yeah only he, he, four he, goals yeah four no, he goals. won he he let in four goals and won all three games. Okay, you said Britain. only allowed four shots. I was like, what? Oh, four goals. Sorry, four goals. <laughs> Stop sixty. Yeah, that's how good they were. Um, no, he he's sorry. He stopped uh, stopping sixty out of sixty four shots. That's. I mean, that's oh, still really in the three that's games. That's insane. still really good. That's. And the thing too is now it's like they're in with. I know. I think it's what Czech Republic, Italy, events, Canada, yeah. Finland, U- United States, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, and Czech. Uh, Russia, Russia is an asterisk. Russia is an iffy. That's because they're we're weighing on the 2025 announcement on that. And if they're if they get if they're allowed to, then they're in. If not, then it's France that's taking their spot. And the reason why Italy is in that spot instead of anyone else is because it's in Milan and they're hosting it. So we all know how the Olympic rules work. You're automatically. Oh, and there's also, sorry, there was also Latvia and Slovakia also got spots. Slovakia, okay. Slovakia is really good. Latvia is, Latvia has been on the come up a long time. Like they know how to produce players, especially goalies. Latvia is mm-hmm. a sneaky team. They are pretty scary. I was going to say, I don't remember them pre- performing, and I, I could be remembering vastly wrong, whatever. I don't remember them performing particularly well in the world juniors, but I do know that they're developed players especially their goaltenders have been world juniors if they, they, they've been getting a little bit better in the world juniors i'd say the it's the worlds that they're doing pretty good in mm-hmm. the world championships um okay. i'm really curious to see how with because you see with like all these other countries coming up like you know germany's getting better of course leon dryasal being the main guy you know more cider and all of them too so it's it's i'm curious to see how some of these teams do it's good to see Denmark in there though, because you got mm-hmm. three, of the, you got three of the four Scandinavian area teams in there. Obviously, Norway's yep. not in, but you still get the you still get the powerhouses of Sweden, Finland. Now you got Denmark. I'm excited so, to watch Sweden. That's going to be a fun team to watch. So let me tell you, Puckpedia, because I was because you know how they do the internet. They have international rosters now, mm-hmm. so some teams are pretty easy to do, and some are like extremely hard. Because Germany's got no one, Sweden. Their work, the hard part for them is is who to pick because they are loaded with NHL guys. Like it is scary how stacked we can get mm-hmm. with their roster. So yeah, it's it's gonna be very interesting for sure. And even of course the United States and Canada. I mean, obviously we know J- Jacob Slavin's gonna make it for the USA and Sebastian Ahu for Finland. Oh, absolutely. After after that, we'll see. I guess <laughs> toss up. I suppose I would love I would love to see Seth Jarvis make it for Team Canada, but. Oh, that'd be awesome. But that, I mean, honestly, that roster is going to be stacked um, yeah. with how no. many Canadian players. I mean, we have time to decide. I mean, we still have time. The Olympic is not until 2026. So yep. it is a little bit out. Um, oh, you know, they're already projecting rosters for that. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, they've, Jay Fresh has been doing that forever. They've, they've, so. they've, like, some places so, have Jacob Slavin on the third pair. <laughs> like, yeah. So there. that, so, yeah. So that's one thing. So, of course, they're thinking, you know, Jacob Slavin is going to be on the U.S. team. 
but the NHL Network. Um, oh, oh, so um, a little we bit ago, they dropped. Oh. What do you think of our top twenty defensemen right now? And they dropped that, and I'm pretty sure they deleted it because they, they got some they got some feedback <laughs> that people were not excited that was, about. So um, looking at the replies to that on Twitter, that is easily, and I, I know I'm not alone in thinking this, one of the worst lists I've ever seen for defensemen yeah. in my life. So, and so I'm let's not go, just saying that because Jacob Slavin is 13th. Like, there are so other let's, reasons for this. Let's go. So you've got Cal, Cal McCarr as number one. Fair. I mean, obviously. I mean, obviously. Fair. Quinn oh, Hughes, number two. Well, yeah. Morris duh. Winter, done. Victor to. Hedman is number three. Uh, a little too high. I think he deserves the third spot. Top um, five, maybe top seven, but not three. Roman Yossi, number four. I, I would put Roman yeah. Yossi three, in my opinion. Yeah. Miro he- Heskinen. I always, yeah, I, mean, we're, we're, we're I always struggle with his last name. It makes me like stutter when I say it. Yeah, don't, uh, don't don't let the Finnish fans hear that because they are. Really I know, but I'm just saying it makes me stutter. Like I, it's a word, one of those words where you can read it, but then when you say it out loud, you're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, yeah. He's good in the no, yeah, he yeah, move him up too. He's really good, very underrated in my um, opinion. Um, number six, Kristoff Horsling. I do have a kind of a. He had a really good playoff. Six is a little high for me just after one really good year. And that's not saying because he used to be a former Carolina Hurricane, but it's, that's just that's a little high for I can see one why. solid playoff. It's some of the, it's some of the next couple ones that are before Slavin that I actually have more of an issue with. Um, okay, number seven, Charlie McAvoy. I'd see maybe this is a little bit of bias or whatever. I'd almost put him higher. I think he's about in this. I think he's in the right spot for me, honestly. Number eight, Adam Fox. <sighs> higher in my opinion. Normally people put him higher. Yeah. yeah. Number nine, Evan Bouchard. <laughs> one okay, one long playoff run. Like he's okay. I would not put him in the top ten. I don't know if I would ever put anyone on the Oilers on a defensive list. <laughs> um <laughs> number ten. This one is I'm I'm, I'm sorry. This one should not be above Jacob Slavin. Devin Tays. Well, mm, as of recently, mm, as of recently, would you put him? I I, I, give, I give him. A, well, my for, for this for me, it's because of the fact that he plays with Cal McCarr. That's kind of why he's so high yes. on the list. I, 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 I can like see this. why. I can see why he's this high. Because I, he, is good, he is good defensively, but he also plays with Cal McCarr, and that's kind of like a supplemental to like okay this guy's really good as because someone who had him on her fantasy hockey team this man does not do as much as everyone thinks he does <laughs> okay 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 listen to me as somebody who has watched it watched the avalanche like re- almost religiously last year hear me out here i do think a lot of- of Hurricanes podcast for? <laughs> shut up <laughs> listen no, as somebody it, like, yes, Kale McCarr, I think definitely boosts those numbers. But Devon Taves is one of those guys that's in conversation to be a defensive defenseman. He plays more of a defensive role. If we're putting him anywhere on this list, I think he bumpers Slavin on either side. Um, you you could make it's an argument for him. You, right. It's, so, for those it's Jacob Slavin knows the one A, let's be honest. <laughs> No, for me, like if if he would were put just a slot above Jacob Slavin, okay, I could see it. If he were put a spot just below, cool, fine with me. I think you could slip. It it depends on what you're grading on. It it really does. It depends on what you're grading on uh, for me. So if you're, if are you looking at points? It's definitely points. Because for me, I mean, that's not what de- defense is about. I understand. Yeah, that's not what it is. It should be for anyone, Bailey. Walk, walk, <laughs> we agree walk, with you. No, I know. I know. I know. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, worst, man. Okay. Okay. So we'll keep going. Anyway. So next, ne- number 11, Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, he, I, I could see that. I could see him being in around the top 12 range. He is really good on a meh sabers team but see but see a lot of these names you're given like meh i could see he could be there but like when mm. so number 12 (laughs) josh morrissey yeah he's like his offensive his offensive side has gotten better but he's really good defensively so yeah yeah that makes sense 
He's really okay. So for, for all these where you're like, mm, yeah, and then you're like, yeah, I could see him there. Do you believe that any of those ones that you said before should be the next one is Jacob Slavin? Do you think they should be above him? No, not where really. Would you, where would you have bumped? J where would you have bumped Slavin? At the most eight, maybe nine. At the worst, he should be nine. top ten. He oh, top ten nine. easily. Yeah, he's top ten easily. I think he's either eight or nine, not thirteen. He should be definitely higher. I would I'll, say I would I'll, say he's I'll, in. I say put him if, if you have to, if you have to talk about offense, put him after Adam Fox before Bouchard and Taze. Ten would have been more respectful than thirteen. I would say yeah, at the worst ten, highest I would go is eight. I'm kind of more mad even about who's at twenty. Anyway, um, keep going. Number fourteen, Zach Wierenski. Yes, he's uh, yeah he, he, yeah. If it wasn't for the injuries, this guy would be like beyond legit. He'd be he'd be almost near top ten. It's just injuries absolutely kill him. But yeah, no, Zach Wierenski, where he's at for what he's had to deal with, hundred percent. Especially perfect. given the team that he's on too. Number fifteen, Noah Dobson. Yeah. He's yeah, he's underrated. He's just, he's so vastly underrated. I know he's I know he's with the Islanders, but he's a vastly underrated defenseman. He 16, is really good. Matthias Ekholm. Yeah, he was good with Nashville, and he got even better with the Edmonton Oilers. Got to respect that one. Seventeen, Drew Doughty. Like that's a that's a leg that's a legacy pick because of who he is. It's Drew, <laughs> it's Drew Doughty. I would. I think there's a lot more other defensemen that are better than where he's at right now in his in his career. That's that, that's a I, legacy. It's, I struggle to see people from the West in this list. Um, number eighteen, Noah Hannafin. Oh no! I I I I like Noah Hannafin, but come so, on. So man. I'm more. I'm actually. I, I'm a little offended for Slavin. I'm more offended for the next two. Honestly, nineteen, oh, Dougie no. Hamilton. Oh. He missed a lot. He missed a lot. He missed a lot of games last year. To be honest, just like Drew Dowdy, that's a legacy pick of who who Dougie is. Was, he was yeah. really good. I when would he still did put play. him above Dowdy. No, but I, I, I think they're 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 going off of I believe last season performance. And honestly, okay. given given and then number twenty, really he was he was really number good. twenty. He I put insider at twenty hurts me a little bit. He hurts me. should be he should be higher than twenty, but I can see why they're going to be like, well, he's really good. Put he's not there yet. Put him, put him up near 13, 14, 15, somewhere up there. He's he deserves more than the legacy guys. That I, are, I, I, would, I I I would put him. Up, who's wait? Who is that? Was it Dobson at fourteen? Dobson's fifteen. Who's at sixteen? At home. Mm, I would I would put him like I put him right behind at home and Dobson. He's really good, but I think those guys are just a little bit better. So I'd say 17 would be a respectable number for Mark okay. Sider. But guys, 17 okay. through 19, uh, I, you know, Dougie Hamilton at 20 at worst. But yeah, there's some of these pictures you're just like, come on, really? Nah, I like Noah, Dougie I like at 19, Noah. but Dowdy at 20. Noah Hannafin <laughs> is so high. Like, I will say, looking at more, more at Sider, too, he, he had a negative seven last season with the Detroit Red Wings. He only had 42 points. Well, the Red Wings, the Red Wings had a falling off and then a come to almost come to Jesus. Come moment. to Jesus. So <laughs> they, 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 I mean, yeah, they give they the kid a break. <laughs> they, uh, when, no, when they were actually flying, he was really good. But when they hit that really long skid of, I think it was what, an entire month where they think they won maybe three games. That was brutal to watch. Honestly, yeah. we, we have bad skids too. <clears throat> November. <clears throat> Sorry. No, Western Canada <laughs> and the West Coast trip. <laughs> um yeah. So, so speaking of Jacob Slavin. Mm, yeah. So we all higher. we all agree Jacob Slavin should be higher. But Absolutely. um speaking of if you're wanting to see the Canes play any of these top 20 defensemen according to the NHL, um the league has also announced the six regular season games for the Canes national TV appearances. Um, actually, no, it's more than six. Sorry, they adjusted yeah, six. I, 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 Sorry, I, 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 they adjusted six of them. Okay. Yeah, we have, we have 10 national games. So the first one is our oh. home opener, mm -hmm. October 11th, Tampa Bay. I think that's what ESPN Plus and Hulu. Mm hmm. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of ESPN Plus Hulu games. <laughs> you know, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of I'm happy about it. More people can see them. But yeah, but what what do we hear every year though? Uh, they stink on national television. No, don't do it. Like we're gonna hear it. You know, I mean, we're gonna it's hear gonna it. happen. Um, okay, Every, so kind of you got Wednesday, November twentieth against at Philadelphia. 
and then which is on TNT. <laughs> Honestly, mm-hmm. I heard a lot of people that were saying during the uh, cup run that TNT had the best broadcast. That people were wanting the TNT broadcast guys over the over normal- ESPN. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Had, I mean, you got Wayne. You got the Gretz. Well, uh, Henrik, Lund- Hen- Hen- Henrik Lundqvist. Like- I mean, both. I'd rather hear from these players. Give them no, to me because, honestly- dude, I would listen to Henrik Lundqvist talk nonstop because mm-hmm. he My knows birthday, his stuff. He knows his stuff, and he's he's unbiased. He literally mm-hmm. will just tell you this is this is why this is why he took the shot. This is why the goal co- goaltender did this compared to some other people up there that are very biased. So I would rather hear from him. Also, I'd rather yeah. see him on camera than a lot of other guys. The, um, my my biggest issue is that, and it's not just national broadcasts that you see this, but ESPN, you can tell how much they value hockey, which is about this much, right? Like it's a minuscule amount for listeners. Um, they they there's no respect for hockey on ESPN broadcasts on ESPN channels in general. Um, they they don't sound like they know all that much about the sport. There's not a whole lot of detail when it comes to analytics during intermissions, things like that. The bias is very evident when there is like a lot of analytical talk and knowledge. TNT, I used to hate the broadcast. I used to hate the amount of uh, loyalties and sways and things like that. Like there, there was so much bias. It drove me nuts. And that, that's how you know, like, it's its a, its a problem when I'm sitting there saying not give TNT their role in this. Like, they, they've they kind of earned that, especially with, you know, appearances from Gretzky, appearances from Lundqvist. So, I don't know. I mean, we do have some, we'll have some more TNT games. So, like, um, you keep going Tuesday, December 17th, you got against the New York Islanders. Thursday, January 9th, you got Toronto. Both of those are ESPN Plus and Hulu games. Wednesday, January 15th. A lot of these are coming in the next year. Um, January 15th against Buffalo. We're back on TNT. Okay, just kidding. We only have two TNT games. Um, and then Tuesday, January 21st at Dallas. Uh, the rest of these are all ESPN plus Hulu. Thursday, February 6th at Minnesota, 7.30 ESPN. Tuesday, March 25th, Nashville. Thursday, April 10th, Washington. Saturday, April 12th, New York Rangers. That's a disgusting 3 p.m. game mm-hmm. on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Mm. Mm. See, I honestly, after seeing what the Ducks are doing with their broadcasts this season... It makes me so mad for the national broadcasts. It makes me even more mad for what Bally is kind of doing and how what their whole situation is. Well, I mean, the the stars are doing it too. They're they're under the same company. Oh, really? Hmm? Yep they are. Uh, they're both with Victory Plus. I this want is- that for the league because do you know what that does to viewership and broadening audiences? It's. It- you know, you know what the ducks? You know what the ducks broadcast range is, which is ins- absolutely insane. LA all the way down to so uh, Orange County all the way down to like the border. They all got all of Hawaii as their broadcast. No zone. kidding. The Ducks have the Hawaii broadcast zone. So th- oh well, th- and, and that's think, amazing actually. Yeah, well, th- and think about well, we, we talked to Dan La Taraka. What do we have? North Carolina, South Carolina and Southern Virginia. You could hit a lot of people if we do a, if we do a local like because it's it's just who's ever in your radius of your TV range, yeah. So like all of us besides you, Bailey, of course. Because I just I just have <laughs> questions. I've just had questions. You see, you've seen Bally. They've gone bankrupt. Then you see the announcement that things are coming through Amazon. I just not anymore. It's not. I know. <laughs> Amazon I just, back to. <laughs> uh, I just want answers. I just want the thing with Victory I want Plus less too. Glitches. <laughs> Victory Plus is free. It's free for the local area. Like yeah, you get you get those for free, and from what I've heard, like the, the like behind scenes content is absolutely amazing from the Ducks and the Stars. Like people are loving Victory Plus already. 
Anyway, mm-hmm. we talk about I, I, I this is just gonna make me more and more mad because I just want to keep talking about it. Um, last bit of news before the big news that we've been waiting for is of course Matt Cullen is to be inducted into the US hockey hockey hall of fame. He is was with our 2006 Stanley Cup champion team. Um big news. That's great. Yeah. Con- yeah. Congrats to Matt Cullen and also Brad Malone, former hurricane, uh, also just announced his retirement. So mm. He, yeah, he had 266 regular season games with the Canes. He recorded 72 goals, 109 assists for a total of 181 points. Colin, Colin was a huge, a huge uh, contributor to that cup win. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely 100% well-deserved. Have had two different stints with the Canes, actually. Yep. He, he took a bit of a uh, free agency break. Uh, he played before, with the quite a few teams. <laughs> yeah. so I know, Minnesota, Pittsburgh. Us. Yeah, he yeah. Lot. yeah, yeah. So, but congrats to him. And then, of course, the big news that I mean, we've all been talking about all week. Keeping you on your toes. Keeping you on your toes. I'm sure you don't know what we're going to talk about. But just um, bury the lead, cat. Just bury the lead. Like 40 <laughs> minutes into the show, he's back, <laughs> Mr. Money. Did bag anyone has been have any doubt that Seth Jarvis would resign with us? Not no. the amount of times Eric Tolsky said, "Guys, be patient. Just wait." <laughs> I like how the I like how I like how I like how the I like how the hurricane said it's like it's gonna happen. It's like okay, everyone can just breathe and stop asking us. Like it's okay. <laughs> it's it's my it's, favorite. It's, I think my favorite thing is Seth being like he didn't quite understand the deal either. <laughs> he was okay. like, I had to get them to explain it to me multiple times. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, I don't think a, I mean I'll give him a pass for the fact that I don't think a lot of people know what deferred payments means or what it does. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah, that's but how not... many people straight up go to their media and, t- and say, I don't know what that meant, but I did it. <laughs> I, just think that meme, I just think of that meme with all the equations running around my head, and I'm just like, that that was Seth when they were explaining this. A hundred percent. Yeah, and the thing and the thing too is they also did it with Jacob Slavin, but that wasn't a huge deal because it wasn't that much of a difference in mm-hmm. AAV space. So yeah, the Hurricanes did it twice this this season. So and it's it's not it's not technically against the rules. It's mm-hmm. not against the no, rules. No, it's it's been part it, of the CBA since the lockout of two thousand five. They, went, so yeah, they did all the legal. checkpoints. Like Tolski is a genius. Like he was like, you, this is available to me. <laughs> this Why is don't I take advantage class. of it? Just because uh, no one else is doing it, why can't I do it? It's technically uh, as, not illegal. As as former employee of the Hurricanes, Mike Foreman said, 5D chess for Eric Tolsky in the front office. 5D chess. 5D chess. I asked him, is it 4D? He goes, no, it's 5D with Eric Tolsky. I'm like, you know what? That's actually fair. Okay. I, I, yeah, that, that makes sense. Don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> I mean, it's Mike Foreman telling me, like, duh. right. A duh. Duh. So yeah, I mean, big props to them. Hey, you save four hundred thousand dollars for the next eight years, and you pay them three point two million at the very end. So hey, you're not you know you're not in the DP Etcher situation where it's like here's your contract for the next forever. So it works and, out to where it's seven point five instead of seven point nine. And I want to kind of turn attention to the press conference too, and some interesting so points great. that we we predicted. Uh, I remember talking about this when you know talks were still kind of I'm I'm guessing going on we were trying to figure out is this going to be an eight-year deal or are we looking mm-hmm. at a bridge and he basically said you know the bridge was i don't think ever on the table pretty much mm-hmm. yeah. um which i think is really really cool of him to just kind of sit there and say you know this has always been home this is or uh since i got here like i i couldn't imagine playing anywhere else um he looks as uh, this is uh, fun like this is yes it's a job to him but it's also it like it, it's something fun that he gets to do because of the people he's surrounded with because of the great community that the hurricanes have provided for him um didn't want a big city felt at home here like i i, I think that's really really important to sit there and say okay no bridge was never never an option okay, so there. here see so here's my thing so he goes from a hotel room to sebastian aho's house to the spirit coke and the Emmys. Mm-hmm. does he get his own place or is he just like he's got a he's got a deck out as two one <laughs> <laughs> no, he's gonna, but he's still gonna keep going to Burns' house for food. Let's be honest. He's, he's, he's gonna put some new rims on and probably tin the windows. And of course, his yeah. financial his financial people are like, no, save your money. Just, I just, mean, everyone was worried we'll when Spitz bought the new car. So let's see what Jarvis says next. But what's oh, really exciting yeah. for Canes fans is that means we have a lot of big players locked in for a long time. 
You've oh, got Sebastian yeah. Aho through 20, 31, 32. Mm-hmm. You've got Svechnikov through 28, 29. Slavin through 32, 33. Mm-hmm. And you've also got KK for a little bit as well. And so, KK. And yeah, KK really- too. And, to, and yeah. now you've got Jarvis. Like, that's a pretty strong core. And... Mm-hmm. I mean, also, don't, for, don't forget, too, uh, Sean Walker for the next five seasons as well. So it's not as long so as them, but, but that's that's still a pretty hefty amount of time, too. So you're talking a good length of having at least a couple of guys there for a good long haul run. I am yeah. foaming at the mouth for Sean Walker. This I'm so <laughs> excited to watch this man play with the Canes. Anyway, well, we're, <laughs> yes, we're all really excited. I love, honestly, so I'm going to say two quotes from that press conference, which I loved. Um, from Seth Jarvis, of course, he says, I'm just trying to be the best version of myself. I'm not trying to change my game and play a completely different way. I want to keep playing hard. I'm going to keep putting in a thousand percent effort as I get older, as I learn the game more, as I get more comfortable, obviously stuff's going to change and hopefully my offensive side grows, my defensive side grows, but it's just making sure I don't change the values that I came in and earned this contract with and made this team with which is all based on work ethic, compete, and making sure I put my best foot forward every time I step on the ice. And then Tolski echoed that with, Rod asked a lot asked a lot of our players. We demand a lot. There are not many people who cannot do everything we ask, but exceed everything we ask. Seth is one of those players, and it's, really, it's a really great look to lock him up and have him commit to us for the next eight years and hopefully beyond that too. Yeah. You couldn't ask for a better, like the organization, yeah. the the guys in charge, they love him. He loves to be here. He fits exactly what they're wanting. And we, we've we talked about it a little bit before. It's going to be interesting to see what Seth Jarvis, Seth Jarvis has already been like, he's on the rise. Mm-hmm. When we got Gensel, he, his offense, everything stifled just a little bit. So what happens now that we don't have Gensel? Is he just going to keep going up? I would, I, I mean, that's what they're expecting, clearly. Again, we, we uh, they I mean, talked we, about we, it a little bit. We're... They talked about it a little bit during the press conference, too, and mentioning, you know, he did play last year with a, or most of last year with a torn labrum and rotator cuff. Um, so I honestly, I, I would take next uh, last season, add a, I don't even know how many points to it because this it, it's it's only addition. Like he he's only going up. I I don't see I I don't see next year being anything other than a new career high for him. Well, and also he also played on the third line with the Jordans too, so he was kind of like the catalyst for that line. But now mm-hmm. you're also looking at possibly like you know Andrei Sveshnikov, Aho, and Jarvis on that first line. Oh boy, that line's going to be an absolutely disgusting line of like like who like who do you who do you stop on that line of those three guys like it's gonna be very tough but this is the fact that you look at Seth Jarvis and how everyone saw his sophomore season as a slump but it's more of like he just made his defensive game so much better now you look at him where he there's that stat that the Hurricanes threw out like he played over like what 16 minutes on shorthanded had like almost like 300 percent more of like his face-offs like he basically did everything and anything that the Hurricanes needed him to do and yeah, Bailey, I agree. Like, you're if he's fully healthy and not having to pass around the lineup, I I would not be surprised if he scores 40 goals and hits like 75, 80 points next season for the Hurricanes. Absolutely. No, we I, like I said, I'm I'm calling it now. This is a new career high for Seth. Yeah, I, I'm scared to see what he does with it. Eight, eight but... years, with, eight, eight years of Seth Jarvis with eight years of Sebastian Ajo, another five with Svech. S- one carry for six, KK for six. Then, yeah, you look at the defense, Slavin for nine more, Sean Walker for five. Then we have Ghost and Jalen Chaffield for three each. Oh, and also Pierre Kachekov. <laughs> so, not too bad, honestly. As, there, as Mr. Fantastic Swimmer said himself, he, he he's going to be pushing himself uh, to be the best version of himself for this upcoming season. So I, I like how Eric Tolsky says, like, please next time wear a life preserver. <laughs> I'm a fantastic swimmer. <laughs> he's not a doctor, but he's a fantastic swimmer. All right. And we've got a few more sponsors for you guys. NFL Week 1 is here, and a new season means new ways to get in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like picking a player to score a touchdown. Be ready to do your own touchdown dance. I'm scared to even ask what the Carolina Panthers are. But (laughs) score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place 
to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just five bucks and get one month of NFL plus premium on us. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369 in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gambling gaming resources, see DKNG dot co slash ft ball nfl plus premium offer available only to new and former nfl plus subscribers additional nfl plus premium terms at nfl.com slash terms man i i know a lot of people are excited that uh hot that um football is back but i'm gonna be honest mm-hmm. i'm counting down the days for hockey and when if they can give me some nhl network um, I'll be <laughs> the right thing on. that I was saying the other day to somebody, I'm I'm looking as football at football season starting as a stepping stone that we're one step closer to hockey. That's it. Yep. <laughs> Sorry to all our NFL people, but we are of course a hockey podcast. But you know what? With hockey coming up, we can give you a little money off if you want to buy some tickets. If you're not already a season ticket member or partial season ticket member, um. You got to go to games. You got to get some money off because, I mean, after a while, that adds up, man. You got to save some money for beer here and there. Uh, so shout out to SeatGeek, of course, for sponsoring. Uh, we are brand ambassadors for them, and they are awesome. We, I, I know I have personally used them from time to time to go see some of my favorite bands in concert. Um, they, they honestly, they just make things easier. They, you can see their ticketing app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. Uh, they do a zero out of 10 score. And of course it's, you can see the red means bad seats, green, good seats. Guys, it's super simple. Um, so of course our viewers get $20 off your first ticket purchase with the code, the search cast, all caps. Um, we'll have that in our description so you can see where to get that code again. But of course it's the search cast, super easy. Go get some cheap tickets, guys. It's, Make sure you have a great view of the ice, especially with a, a certain number 24 that's uh, going to be on the ice for us for quite a while. You want to go and see him play ASAP. But again, use code DSurgeCast for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. And with that, our final ad comes into play. Our OG sponsor of the podcast since day zero of the podcast, guys, we have Primo X Hockey for you. If you guys are looking for some hockey gear, some hockey merch, whatever your heart desires in regards to the hockey realm, Primo X probably has has it for you. Be sure to go to PrimoXHockey.com. Throw some things in your cart. And once you are at checkout, be sure to use code SurgeCast. In that little promo box, you get your Sebastian Ajo discount, 20% off your order. I don't know how you can beat that. It's a pretty sweet deal, especially for, you know, guys that have been with us since day one. Uh, If you guys are not online shoppers, I know I personally am. So that's my personal route if I'm going to buy stuff from Primo. But if you guys are in the Triangle area, they do have a warehouse for you. It is over on East Diggs Drive. They are 1401 Diggs Drive, Suite E in Raleigh. They have some new hours that have just updated as of uh, September 3rd, I believe. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sunday, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday hours are cut a little bit short, but hey, at least they're open. I mean, you have those hours open after work, too, so you can get there to get all the things you need. Absolutely. And the cool thing about going in warehouse, you maybe don't get that discount, but they do have $5 skate sharpening, which is a sweet deal wherever you're at. So be sure to go check them out in store. Like I said, you won't get that discount in store, but let them know we sent you us just so you know, the words getting out the surge cast is sending people over. I'm sure they love the patronage. Uh, but again, on primoxhockey.com code surge cast at checkout 20% off your order. Like I said, if you're looking for balls, pucks, sticks, uh, 
padding, flags, koozies. skates, uh, merch such as flags, koozies, sweatshirts, things of that sort. Like I said, Primo X has it for you. They do free shipping in continental U.S. as well. So again, Primo X Hockey, go check them out. And now we'll throw it back to the episode. All right. That was a great word from our sponsors, but we've teased it long enough. Uh, our special guest is here with us. And uh, if you're on the visual side of things, you probably recognize him. He is pretty good. He's a longstanding guest here. And we always love to have say him a familiar on. face. <laughs> the from the last time when I was on with you, and I think a little less, but yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mike. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, good to be with you. It's been a long summer. So, oh, gosh. You can yeah, tell us again. how's your summer gone? <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> And dragging it the same amount of time. Uh, a lot of, a lot of back and forth uh, with home because uh, a lot went on. But uh, it was good to be home for a bit, and uh, now I'm back here and, and just ready for the season to start. Absolutely, this is like I say, it's we're we're coming in on what under 35 days, give or take. By the time people are seeing this, I always like to say, uh, you know, like 34, 35 30. today, or 31 yeah. if you're watching it, whatever it is. Well, you know. to act, technically, it would be Cam War days away when this comes out. So, oh, well, yeah. then there you go. So, hey, yeah, even better, more. even better. Uh, so, yes, we're Raptors, good stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it, this is going to drag and fly by all at the same time. So, looking forward to it. But, yeah, but we do, there really are. Good. There are people playing in Kane's uniforms this week, though. There, there is in uh, in Nashville, and uh, that's good. There's that rookie tournament, which is fun to be a part of, with the Preds and the Panthers, and the you know the Canes, and you know it's everything that uh, goes along with it. It's uh, been pretty entertaining to watch in, in Tampa. I think if I left out Tampa, so mm. uh, you get to see some good prospects, and I, I think this this could actually be an interesting prospect tournament. Uh, for some canes heading into and having momentum heading into training camp. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, ironically, and I'm using the word correctly, I will be in Nashville, but I will not be there for the rookie tournament. Although I will. Oh, gosh. I will, wow. I will are, you go, are you going for a bachelorette? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the back of a flatbed with white claws and oh, God. line dance. Yeah, that's exactly what Nashville Rolling means. Broadway all by your lonesome. <laughs> oh, my you got it. So, no, no. I will pop my head in for a minute if I can, depending okay. on whether uh, whether they're having it. So, now I was gonna say it's been a while since we've last talked to you. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of new additions to the team. Um, haven't kind of wanted to kind of get your opinion on you know who you've kind mm -hmm. of had your eye on as far as you know new roster additions. Well, I I think the biggest thing is the swapping of the defensive pairing when mm -hmm. Brady Shea and, and Brett Pesci are gone, and now it's gonna be. Sean Walker and a familiar face in, in Shane Costas bear coming back. And yeah. uh, Zach and I actually talked about this a little mm -hmm. bit earlier in the, the summer. Yep. It's, is it the same? No. Can it be similar? Yeah. I, I think it really can be. The, the tough thing for me is, you know, Brett Pesci's a guy who was drafted by the Canes came up through the organization and, you know, it, it's not just the stuff you see on the ice. It's behind the scenes, the kind of guy he is, he and Shay, became great friends and were a great pairing. You saw it. Uh, I get to use the line again whenever people would ask Rod Brindamore about his number one defensive pairing. He'd say, do you mean Pesci and Shea? And he wasn't kidding. You know, he wasn't saying it with any sarcasm. Right. Um, I, I think now, though, you take a look at the Canes blue line and the way it's set up. Uh, you don't have to lean on on one or two pairs now. I, I think however you want to put, I think we'll see Burns and Slavin to start because that pairing's been together and it it works. We know it works. Right. The question is, are we going to see, is it going to be Gostas, Bear, and Walker? And then you keep everything together where you have Chatfield and Orlov. You know that that works or you maybe move these guys up. But I think you're going to see. You're going to like Sean Walker a lot if you're a Kings fan. You really are. Oh, yeah. I, I had the pleasure of watching him a lot last season. Yeah. I loved what I saw. I am... so, you know, he comes he comes in and Bailey, he's going to be the Pesci role. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you're going to have Gostas Bear in the Shea role of producing offense. And, you know, he's. I think he's Gostas Bear is going to get a look maybe at that first power play. And Burns I might get the second oh, yeah. he's, oh, yeah. I mean, he's familiar with it. He, yeah. he ran it before for us. So. And, and, you know, it, it might be a way to, you know, less than a couple of minutes for Brent. And I'm just – this is before they're really hitting the ice. I have no problem with Brent Burns being on power play one. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that you've got a guy who knows the system. You can you can exchange it. You can lessen the minutes for 
all six of these guys because of how interchangeable they're going to be this year. So that's the one thing that I really do have my eye on because the backbone of this team for the last six years has been the defensive core and how good the pairings have been and, you know, what you get out of them and then how tight this team plays as a defensive unit in their own zone. And then you get the goaltenders who benefit from that. I'm not worried about how the forwards are going to be. If anything, I think that this is going to be a, a nastier team to play against when you add a player like William Carrier. Uh, I, yeah. think, I think that Jack Roslovic has a lot to play. I've always liked him, but he's a guy who always seems to like, is this the ceiling? Is Does he have more? I think he has more, and, and he'll have a chance here. He might not be a center in Carolina by the position, but I think you're going to see him as a righty take a lot of draws because that's been his position by trade. So a lot of little things. Uh, I'm, I'm just excited to see. The other thing is – couple of mainstays now as I'm rambling, but it's a good question, Bailey. It's <laughs> can Andre Svechnikov and Marty Natchez take steps forward mm-hmm. to be legitimate NHL stars? I think Andre Svechnikov is. It's it's a couple of things that have derailed him the last few years. You know, coming I mean, ACL is a little bit of a toughie to yeah, work through. Yeah. And, you know, I think you saw as the season went on and he started feeling comfortable in Anybody I've ever talked to in the sports world, be it football or basketball or the NHL, when it comes to an ACL, the hardest part isn't the physical. It's the mental. It's the mm-hmm. trusting that it, it's going to hold up and you can get back to your old self. And once you do that, you break through. My thing for Marty Natchez is, all right, there's no contract stuff for now that you got to worry about. Be the guy two years ago who put up 70 points. In fact, be, be better than the guy who put up 70 points two years ago. This is a big chance for him. Uh, and a big season for him, I think, that way. So those are two things that I'm interested in because everybody else, I think we know what we're going to get out of Sebastian Ajo and Seth Jarvis and, and Jack Drury and Jordan Stahl and Jordan Martin. Look at the, the rest of the faces we know what we're getting. It's I'm looking for when people say where are the goals going to come from, those two guys. I think in, if uh, if he's listening, Andre, brother, 40-goal uh, year for you. You know, that's, that's the expectation. <laughs> and for Natchez, is, is he going to be is he going to be around 30 or can he go above like those if those two things happen Kane's world you got nothing to worry about if that happens. absolutely would you I mean, so what, would you say the who are the who has the bigger expectations on would it be Andre or would it be uh Martin Nietzsche because the fact that with Nietzsche you're going from three million to six and a half and you had a lot of eyeballs on you during the offseason now it's like okay now show us why we paid you six and a half so like who would you think is kind of more of the the expectations are a lot higher on this guy. No, don't, too. Yeah, don't forget, Zach, that Andre Svechnikov is entering his big deal now, you know, his, yep. his extension. So I think the eyeballs are on him. He's the second overall pick in the draft. Uh, and he's a guy who, you know, he, it's, he doesn't leave me wanting more because he does impact the game in so many different areas. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What I would love to see out of him, though, is the officials. I'm not whining here. Can you give him the benefit of the doubt now? He's been in the league. All <laughs> you would think. You would think. And, and a lot of times, a lot. I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't commit penalties because he does. Um, but so I, do I have the other guys the on same, the ice. The same penalties he commits, he doesn't get when the other team does it against him. They don't get the call right. that he would get if he did it. That's so. thank you, Cat, because I don't want to have to. The NHL broadcasters <laughs> meetings are coming up, and if Gary is watching this, I don't want to have to explain that in front of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, you that's, just you just want the consistency. That's what Rod always says. Is he's like, I'm not complaining. We get penalties. I know my team commits penalties. You can see his face when Svech does one that he actually is like, yeah, he shouldn't have done that. But, but it's the okay. Well, you just saw that one over there, and you didn't call it. So like, you got to call both if you're going to call one. That's all we want. But Cat, this year it's for me. It's the retaliatory stuff. He's he's got to be. He's just got to be smarter than you know. He has to know that if he retaliates, he's getting called no matter what. Right. And we'll see. We'll see if he does that. But no, Zach, he's the guy that for me take the step. We all here in Carolina have been spoiled by his personality and, and what he can do. And yeah, I mean the, the talent is off the charts. All right, now it's now it's time to to take that big step forward and be a a big a big time goal scorer be talked about with the likes of uh, Ovechkin or to be talked about with the likes of, of, and I I can't believe I'm I'm putting him up with guys who score 60 goals, but Austin Matthews, but that's, that's the expectation for him. Now, the funny thing is when he came to the league, he said he wasn't a goal scorer. He said his game was most similar to the guy who we got a glimpse of and did, uh, 
to the Birdman a couple of times. He said his game was closer to Evgeny Kuznetsov's game. And you see the passing ability there. I think he gets really undersold for how good of a passer he is with the puck. Oh, yeah. But now it's it's time, you know, he, he's gonna he's getting paid to put the puck in the back of the net, and I have supreme confidence that he's going to take that step this year and do it. Well, maybe Piotr can give him – like, so we saw how fiery Piotr was to start. And then we also saw – last year it was surprisingly there was also times where he skated away from the conflict and you're like all right he's growing he's learning not to maturing do that. and so maybe he can it's just funny because you know stretch has been in a little bit longer but maybe he mm -hmm. can remind his buddy to be like all right all right we're gonna I, I i would back you up in a second but like let's not do it because then you put me um against the power play and i don't really want it <laughs> um but people do forget that Svetch, when he got hurt, like, of course, everyone was like, oh, he's back and ready for the season. Like, we're so excited. Yeah. But this is a guy that, one, he got through one of his first major injuries, but also he was on the team with a guy that got injured, came back, and got re-injured. And that's going to haunt you a little bit, thinking, like, you're, like, going to come in there and you're like, all right, like, I'm ready to go, but I don't want to be re-injured so fast. I saw what happens. It can. And so even though he's feeling good, it's probably that little lingering doubt of, uh-oh, like, I just want to be extra careful. And that can impact you, like, mentally. Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, that's something, Kat, where you have to ask players. Because I think that's an individual thing. I think that there are some guys who are in their own world. And it's, it's mm -hmm. not a bad thing when I say it. It's, you know, they're not they're not going in going, oh, I saw this happen to this guy. And now it's going to yeah. happen to me. And it's, it's at least, you know. Special players don't do that. Maybe some guys who are. You Mike, know, you want to get him on the podcast? We can ask him. <laughs> you want to help us out? Yeah. Send that text. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. So. Oh, son <laughs> of you thinking son about this last year? And the answer is what? <laughs> like eight question marks. So. Oh, no, I, I'm, and I'm not speaking for him with that. But I, I mean, I get, point, I get the point you're making. I think it was more of it was his really his first major injury. Yeah. And it's coming back from that. And that's hard because. You know, it's the work that those guys put in behind the scenes, and it's not fun. And, you know, you get trainers and you get physical therapists, you know, pulling your knee this way and that way. And then you're, they make sure that they're building everything up around it. And then you got to go through the paces with Bill Berniston, who, in, in my money, is the best in the business. But you, you've got to go through all of these things, and, and you know, then you got to trust it. Uh, mm -hmm. And like I said, I think it becomes – to your point, Kat, I think that's where it becomes between the ears, but I think it's an individual thing for everybody. You know, it's uh, you can't be, I would use it like a, a pitcher in baseball. If you have Tommy John surgery and you have a teammate who had it and then they have to have it again, you can't be on the mound afraid to throw your stuff because you're like, oh God, I just saw this happen to him. It's, it's you got to go and play. But it'll be, I, I think he is fully healthy. He will be healthy coming into the season. Uh, I think we'll see his role. You know, he's definitely – we know he's a top six. We'll just see which which uh, center shakes out to be his everyday centerman, and, and you go from there. You know, you speaking talk? of uh, guys who are coming into the season fully healthy, who we consider uh, pretty important core pieces of our team, we kind of talked about it before having you on. Seth Jarvis has officially – Mr. Moneybag himself has officially been re-signed. <laughs> um, would love to kind of get your thoughts on that. What do you think this kind of means for the team moving forward? What do you think this kind of means for Seth Jarvis moving forward? One, why were you all so worried? That's my first <laughs> wait, wait, no, wait, Not worried. Impatient is, is different than worry. <laughs> wait, who is this we? <laughs> this, thing, like, this thing was going to get done. And, and, Absolutely. And if it, if it went the, the route of what St. Louis did to the Edmonton Oilers, trust me, the Canes would have matched because they had the money to do it. Oh, yeah. um, and then, you know, that's how you look at it. So what do I think this means? I think for Seth Jarvis, this means he can just go play hockey, which is what he loves to do. Uh, and he can do it for eight years, uh, nine years, and just be himself and continue to grow and mature. But you talk about him being healthy, what he was playing through last year mm -hmm. and still became a 30-goal scorer for the first time in his career. Absolutely. You know, I mean, this is, this is a guy who everybody – dreams of having a teammate like that now can he be annoying yes but it's it's endearing not annoying that's how i look at it because he has such a joy and he doesn't look at this as like oh i'm playing in the nhl i'm a big shot he's not that guy he's never 
he if if you don't change in those first two three years, you know, from the the wide eyed kid who walks in that door in the NHL to you know the seasoned veteran who's you know playing through through a lot of things, then you're not going to change. So I think if anything, the contract, you know, getting maybe he's going to buy another jet ski. Don't tell the front office that. Uh, <laughs> but I think what it does is it just unburdens him about any worry whatsoever. And now he can just concentrate on being the best hockey player he can with a group where he is a core part of it. Like mm -hmm. it's Sebastian Ajo, Seth Jarvis, mm -hmm. Andre Sveshnikov, Jacob Slavin. That's your core. When we've always talked about the core of the Carolina Hurricanes. Well, that's, that's been established. That's your core four that you're going to move on with. And uh, when you see the example that Jordan Stahl has set, and then it's been picked up by Sebastian Ajo, uh, the head coach said it as a player, and how he has really taken Seth Jarvis under his wing as a player and developed him and really made him become a, a more responsible defensive player before we saw the offense flourish this year. I, I think the best – honestly, Bailey, I think the best is yet to come. I think yeah. that – his personality, but his game, he's going to be a guy this league can market. For. And, you know, you talk about these core pieces, too. And I, I was just Googling to make sure I, I had all my information correct. You're looking at four core guys who are under 30, too. Mm -hmm. so we're looking at this core being the core for a long time to come. Too. With the oldest, like what? Slavin's the oldest. Slavin's 30. Only, like, yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, so, they're, again, this group isn't going anywhere. And, and now you've got – Younger guys coming up, and I know that there's. And you guys have the questions, but you got younger guys coming up too in the system. You got to have room for them. And, and the one thing that the Canes front office has been able to do, yes, they've wanted to keep players, and you know sometimes a contract happens and somebody goes away. You know, it's it's there's nothing you can do if somebody hits free agency, and uh, I will never blame any player for going and, and testing free agency if it's especially if it's your big contract. Go see what you're worth. And, right. and go out and, and go and earn it. But you also keep restocking and you got to push and you got to have young guys. You got to have opportunity for them to see if they can come in and play. And Canes have a couple of those guys who are going to be question marks this year. Um, and, and I just like how the front office doesn't just look at, it's not just a win now. I know it's, it's, we're in a win now world, but it's the, how do we win now and then keep winning three, four five years after right. it. So we'll see because the window for this team is it's still wide open. It I was really going to say the, yeah. these deter these deferred payments on his contract really help that along as well too. Yeah. So I mean, well, how, they just, structure, how they structure things, and I'm with Seth. That's what Doctor Eritelsky is all about. I mean, <laughs> above my pay grade. Above my pay grade. Right. 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 That's for the smart people. You just tell me where to sign. <laughs> and, and it, right. It it was interesting. I I recently saw like I've seen people as the season come, you know, there's people making the list of like this team that was like on the, like verge of making the playoffs. Like, is it do or die for them now? Or is this team that made the playoffs so they need, and they didn't go all the way. Like what's going to happen to them? Are they going to go or bust? And on both of those lists, there were teams that have like sold all in like the Vegas Knights yep. or um, some with like Rangers Bruins. And then there were some teams like, the senators that connect like teams that they're like you're so close but like if you don't make it now you're not close again for a while and it was interesting the canes didn't really make either list no. because they're not they're not a worry like i know for canes fans it feels like it's a worry because we're like oh it was so close like we could taste it last year mm -hmm. and then but we're not really in a do or die like the way our front office especially with what they've been like the off season we're not in a go big or bust because they are so well at making sure that we're equipped to keep going. Like, yes. Do we want to see those results soon? Yes. That is never going to be like, no, we're waiting a couple of years. We're going to get there eventually. But it's, it's so interesting that we're not ever labeled on the bottom or the, like on no. the edge of teetering off. Well, so it, I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a big difference from where this team was a decade ago where mm -hmm. it was, you know, where are they? What are they doing to get better? Uh, now, I, I mean, this is a playoff team, barring some really series of un unfortunate events. Mm -hmm. It's our playoff team every year. Now, look, I I'm, I'm a fan just like everybody else. Would you like to have seen 
Steven Stamkos sign here and Brady Shea and Brett Pesci stay. And then you also bring in Shane Gostas, Baron Sean Walker and add everybody else. And then you go back in time and get Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux and then come in. Yeah. That's the monopoly money, Mike. <laughs> that's, I, I get it. That's what you want, but what you have to That's do, deferred have to... payments, Bailey. <laughs> no, no, that is, that is the pre cap era of hockey yeah. in the NHL. Welcome to the Detroit Red Wings of the nineties. <laughs> but money, <laughs> money, money everywhere. Well, they were printing money too. What what the Kings have been able to do is maintain roster flexibility and maintain their core of their team without getting really old or aging out of things. Or and, and this isn't to point you know at other teams and say they're not doing it right, but you take a look at you know Edmonton or Toronto and how much money they have locked up in three or four players. Well, you have to win now with those three mm-hmm. or four players because oh, yeah. that money is not going to go anywhere else until, you know, year six or seven, by the way, I just, the, for the anarchist in me, I would love to see Connor McDavid hit free agency just to see what the deals could possibly be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Edmonton, oh. don't, don't you dare let that happen. I was going to say the Oilers <laughs> wouldn't dream of letting that. Happen. I think, I think Leon Dreisaitl would go to the front office over there with like, he'd be like, no, you lock me in. If you put him on free agency, I'm going to pretend yeah. like that didn't even happen. Well, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> that's, I think that's a package deal. And it's, you know, certain guys, when you get to a point, it's like Sidney Crosby or Tom Tom Brady. I know that I've been going to a couple of sports here tonight, but you you start to take, yeah, you're going to get yours, but you probably don't take as much as you could because you want to be competitive. You want to win like mm-hmm. where you're at. And look, take a look at Carolina now, where you get Sebastian Ajo and Andre Svechnikov and Seth Jarvis and Jacob Slavin to take these deals mm-hmm. before they, they test free agency. Um, that to me is is really the telltale sign of where this organization has come from. Yeah, I know that, that people out there can point to, well, how come that, that didn't work with Jake Gensel? Well, Jake Gensel didn't really come up with the Carolina Hurricanes, now did he? And he came in and maybe he would have stayed if something was done different. I don't know. I'm not in on the negotiations, and I think that's a very good thing uh, for the organization. But at the, at the same time, that to me is – is the proof that these young players aren't sitting there going, well, I want to get to free agency and see what's out there. They're like, how can I stay here? And then you Mm -hmm. take a look at the deals that they sign and how can I stay here and keep this team competitive? I mean, it's called a hometown discount for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. And and these players enjoy playing here for, I can list you a hundred reasons off the top of my head right now. Don't have the time. You guys could probably do the same. Well, and you, you've talked about like, the flexibility of the team because you're looking at – let's just look at the defense alone of, like, how these guys are going to get paid. We you know Slavin's contract doesn't kick in for another year, but when his does, you're talking 6.4. Burns' is $8 million is coming off the books. Orlov's is seven seven five is coming off the books. Then you're looking at, okay, here's Shin Goss to spare for 3.2, Walker for 3.6, Chaffa for 3. So you're basically your entire decor – it's all under six and a half million dollars, and you are playing with a playing with house money at that point. So it's like, let's just, let's just look at this year where Slavin's contract is still relatively good, along with everyone else. I mean, you really can't go wrong when you look at the defensive core, and you're like, yeah, you got two guys close to eight million dollars, but the rest of the group that you're going to have for at least the next three seasons is a solid group. That's you're being able to give yourself more flexibility throughout the roster and that's i think that's kind of huge when you look at what eric tolsky and the front office have done to make sure they stay competitive with mm-hmm. paying, paying the guys what they what they believe that works for them and works for the team so no go back to last year and uh, everybody's scratching their head why does one of the best defensive cores in the league sign dimitri orlov to that deal and it was because they were looking to this year and knowing that they could lose brett pesci and or brady shea and mm-hmm. Now you have, you know, a guy who is the season got along and you know how the Canes play defense is tough. Uh, yeah. It's hard on, it's hard on that back end and it takes you a while to assimilate to it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Words tonight for you guys. Um, but you know, once, once they, once they find their niche and how to do it, you know, they love playing here. But I mean, there, wow. there's a reason where the Hurricanes are revered as one of the toughest teams to play defensively. Yeah. But that's, but that's also, I'm looking, you know, on the books, they had the foresight to go, all right, well, we're going to give him this money because they had the room last year. And then it's looking ahead to what they're going to do afterwards. And we'll see if he stays or if, 
if, uh, you know, he's going to be a guy who, when he hits free agency, I wouldn't be surprised if he wants that test one more time, if, uh, if that's out there. But for me, that's, that was such a smart deal two years ago. Cause like I said, they were looking to win now when they signed him, but they were also looking to the future. Like, well, this could happen. You know, we could lose one of these two guys or both of them. And, you know, Jalen Chatfield turning into the player that he's turned into. That's just great scouting and then great coaching to, to get a guy. Oh, yeah. yep. and, and, oh, by the way, the, if we're going to be really honest, uh, maybe the one and two best prospects in the Kane system are on the blue line in Nikishin and Morrow. So, yeah, and, we're, and it works out perfectly to where Burns and Orlov's contracts both end at the same time. We're like, all right, here is your core four of the defense. Now you're adding Nikishin and Morrow. I mean, who who would not dream of having a defensive group like that where, oh, yeah, your highest-paid defenseman is Jacob Slavin of all people at 6.4, and then you got everyone else, like, under 3 million. still a steal, a steal. Well, yeah, or whatever and, way and, and everyone else is under 3.6. Like, no one's By the way, welcome to anything. Microsoft Excel and how to manage your money today. We're, <laughs> We're not the master class you want to turn into, guys, I promise. But, but yeah, I mean, honestly, Jalen Chatfield, that man should never have to fight for another roster spot with the Canes no. because uh -uh. he has proven himself time and time again. He's like, put me with anyone. I'm going to bust my butt. I'm going to be the first person to the puck. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and I love how him and Orlov, I think the way he played also gave Orlov such freedom to mm -hmm. learn the Kane system is like a lot of the times, of course, like a lot of the new guys wouldn't get put with Brett or Che because they had each other. Some guys would get put with Slavin and that's easy. That's a great way to learn the system because you're like, I've got someone covering my back no matter mm -hmm. what. Um, the third pairing, you're like, is it another new guy? Is it someone else is going to be learning with me? Are we struggling together? And he got Chatfield who was like, don't worry, I got you. I've done it. I I'll cover you if need be. Do the offensiveness that you need to do. I'll step in time to time, but I I got you. And it was when they worked together. I mean, they took a big load of the defensive duties for a while too. So, and how they're both were like, if one was out, they could easily like switch with some other partners. Yeah, I think you're right. The foresight to get Orlov in there was again. I I wasn't seeing that coming, and then it happened. And I was like, okay, let's see, let's see how this pans out. That's interesting. I feel like I say that for a lot of things. I'm never like. Why? I'm more like, okay, they see something that I wasn't seeing. I didn't even have it on my radar. <laughs> I was going to say, when as we've gotten closer to this, you know, Nikishin potentially breaking, like uh, eventually getting onto the roster too. I'm having a few different like hindsights 2020 or like I, looking back now, it's like, oh my gosh, this makes so much more sense. Yeah. And look, that's why the front office gets paid what they get paid to do. Mm -hmm. That's why this organization now is, is, one of the model franchises. When you look at, you know, teams copying what to do and how to build a playoff team, that's what you're seeing right now. And, and as a former Hurricanes employee, Mike Foreman said, welcome to the 5D chess that is the Carolina Hurricanes. So, I mean, which makes total sense. And the, and the good thing too is and some other things to think about for, you know, when we do get Nikisha and Morrow, you look at Gosh Despair and Walker, they both can play on either side of the defensive pairings too. So there's even more flexibility that we're not even possibly thinking of to where, yeah, there could be nights where those guys might have to go to the opposite sides mm -hmm. of what their natural hand is, and that's another thing that I think really benefits the Hurricanes is, okay, let's say one of our best penalty killers is in the box, and we need Sean Walker to go in, but we have whoever is on that right side, right? Throw them to the left. There you go. So, yeah, it's there's a lot of ways that I think Tim Gleason's really going to enjoy being able to move those guys around when need be in certain situations too. So yeah, that's a lot, a lot to look at. Yeah. And you can't take it for granted because if you look around the league, some teams have like one or two really big breakout stars on defense, but the rest are just kind of okay. Or they'll be like, they're, they're okay supporting cast, but I feel like that's what the Canes do really well is that they're like, all right, well, if we're going to have all these people, we're not just going to have one star. We're going to equip him with someone else that, works just well as well with him yep. and then we're going to also have other guys that like they might not be like you might not think that's a star player but we're going to put them in roles and put them with people that they're going to do really well and we're also going to have vers like versatility with them that we can move them like you said to their maybe their non-dominant sides or with different players on our system and they're all going to function like you're going to be like okay great Slavin and Burns are on the ice I'm going to have a really good chance at goal and you're like just kidding their second line and third line are just as annoying to play against because that's how well they function together on defense 
So yeah, no, the hindsight 2020 is wild. And it's going to even get even crazier when um, Nikishin gets closer to coming over here. Cause then you're going to start thinking how we're going to fit him in. Um, but speaking of new guys, that's one that's not still on our, it's on our radar, but not on the roster or anything. Mike, who are you looking at with like the new young guys coming up? Who do you have your eye on to really impress and maybe crack into the roster a little bit? Uh, I think there's two right now and it's uh, Bradley Nadeau and Jackson Blake. And those are the two you look at. And it, it depends on um, what role will be there for these players. Uh, for Nadeau, I, I think he's going to be a goal scorer in this league. I think he's going to be offense. The question is, would it be better served for him to get in the minors and you know, get a little bit stronger that way? And what he has to do to become you know, a, a player to get to those spaces in the professional level. Uh, for Jackson Blake, I think he's going to be a lot like Jack Drury. Uh, he's going to be so smart, so responsible, maybe a little bit more physical. And although we are talking about Kane's tough guy and enforcer, Jack Drury, when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that said, like, when I say that I see Blake is a, a Drury, it's they play a similar game with how smart they are, how good they are with the puck. Uh, with Drury, I think we started to see a lot more offense through his game than people wanted to give him credit for. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Blake, he's going to come in and, and he'll be expected to have a little bit more offense, but he's a guy that you can plug in and I think play and, and put him in a third or a fourth line role and not be like, well, are you doing him a disservice? Does he have to be in the top six where – a player like Nadeau, I think you need to put him in the top six and, and be a, a goal scorer, give him a chance to succeed that way. So, again, I don't coach the team. The guy who every year I vote for the coach of the year does. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, rightfully so. I mean, you know, and rightfully so. I mean, or I cast him. He's always on my ballot and because, you know, I get spoiled. I watch it every year and see what he does with his team. And, and you know, it's the day-to-day -day where I'm like, you, you just can't discount what he does with his group. Mm -hmm. So they'll put him in the right spot. But those are the two I look for. Um, I don't think anybody saw Seth Jarvis cracking the, the lineup the year he did. I do think that there's an eye to maybe one of these two guys can push and be on the opening night roster. Uh, but the, the Canes also have a lot of veterans who are out there. And, you know, as we get closer to training camp, there might be a veteran who gets signed. I know that there's names that are out there, guys who mm -hmm. are going to sign or are on the verge of signing or signed. And then Lou Lamarillo doesn't announce it until, like, you know, <laughs> 59, uh, but we all know these, like all of those things. And, and I love Lou for doing that, by the way, because that's like, <laughs> like this league needs it. Fantastic. As much as people like to complain about that, I love it. You do you, Lou. And uh, <laughs> then, you know, we watch the Islanders make the playoffs, and then I think Canes fans know how that ends up. But at least, yeah. you know, they, they get there. Uh, and, and I just think that there's there's a lot left, but those are the two forwards that I look at and say, okay, if there's a chance, um, you know, could somebody else come up and, you know, you, could do this you think be? Unger Sorum needs a little bit more time? I, he's, he's one of those guys who's a bubble guy for me because I think we all really got impressed with what we saw last year. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was one of the last guys to get sent back, you know, it's, what's he going to be? I, again, he's one of those guys where it all depends on the role that's open. And mm -hmm. if what's better is for him to go play top six minutes somewhere, that's what I – if it's not available with the Canes. And we have a cohesive AHL team finally again. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, a co and a coach who saw him play. That honestly, so. big, that honestly is a big deal this year. Like, last, you could get through it for all of the hand-wringing last year. You can get through it for a year. You can't do it for years because that's when you start to stunt the growth of some players. But, uh, again, this is where, you know, you can give a guy a little bit of time. Uh, Unger Storm is a guy who you can look at. At what point does, you know – Suzuki get the opportunity to play in the NHL? Does he? Doesn't he? Um, you know, at least with the Canes, you, you get to these points when you start talking about players on their their how much runway do you have left? Um, right. But but for me, I think that this is a group where you you mentioned Felix uh, Unger Sorum, which is still one of the greatest names now in pro sports. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, it's it's for me, it's Nadeau, Blake, and Unger Sorum. I would put Unger Sorum maybe a, a tick behind those two. But when I say a tick, it's, 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 he could have a training camp and, and surge ahead of those two because we saw right. his talent. But I, I think it's it's Nadeau and Blake are, are the first okay. two who are going to have the kick at it. 
And I was going to say, when when it comes to, you know, actually having these proper, you know, relations with an AHL team too, um, it, it, the Canes have never really been a team to stint on development and things like that. Like they really do pride themselves on being a very good developmental uh, team in the league. Um, so I don't see them it, like th this. is It's obviously a very calculated decision. Again, we, you, you mentioned a lot like, okay, what role is going to be available? And I yeah. think it, it, that that's kind of where my head would at, was at too, is kind of look at what is available. They're, they're not going to stint any of these guys development yeah. for the sake of, you know, okay, you want to play in the a a NHL go. Well, kind of the, the good thing about it, Bailey is you want to get a look at him in this role. Well, you can do that now in Chicago. Right. right. Let's see what let's see what he's like as a top three mm -hmm. guy in power play minutes or let's see what he's like in a shutdown role. And, you know, maybe it's not open here, but we want him to play that there because if we need it. OK, do we it can get a, better here and actually get minutes. So, yeah, and, uh, I mean, again, there's you know, I, I, I read all this stuff and the prognostications and all of this. It's one of these things where I'm, I'm just like, OK, uh, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, this team has given me no reason to believe they're not going to do anything different than what they've done the previous five years. Uh, I, I I don't say six because six was out of nowhere making the playoffs. Yeah, you know that first year, but the last five years were the expectation there. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed for this team, and now it's just let's get ready and drop the puck. Right, exactly. And going back to Andre Storm too, because I know you mentioned him, and like it wouldn't be a bad thing for him to be in Chicago. I've been saying this for a bit now. You have a head coach in Cam Abbott who did win the Champion Hockey League with Rogler BK in the SHL and get to see saw him play firsthand. So, and you look at the laundry list of guys that he's got right now that's already in the NHL. Now it's Hollander and Marie Sider and stuff like that. I mean, learning from a guy like Cam Abbott who's been there and done that himself as a player, not a bad guy to learn from, honestly. And, and I think giving a transition from the SHL to, yep. hey, go play a year with Cam. And learn from him, who's basically doing the same thing that Rod's doing system wise. Yep. Not a bad thing to do, honestly. We want to give a, a, the kid a year to just get used to North American hockey and we'll see where it goes from there. And well, honestly, having... too... oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, honestly, too, with Darren York having a hand in things as well, Thank that's going to play a yep. huge role in, you know, having, mm -hmm. having that set of eyes and having that quick communication as well. Well, it'd be good, too, to have those guys that are, you know, might be on the edge of making the team and, but they haven't played together a whole bunch yet. Is like you saw guys like Nason and Jury, like their chemistry, just because they had a little bit of time playing together yeah. before they broke into the roster. That's so great. Like I'm, I'm really curious to see what Jury does. This season. I mean, we saw his growth, but he did have such great chemistry with Nason. I want to see who the next person is that stepped up that they have that instant, like, all right, I'll be the front of the net presence. Fire it. <laughs> no. It's, it's going to be, that might be Carrier. It might be Roslovic. might be somebody who. Eric uh, Robinson. Yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe. Uh, by the way, Bailey, I was going to say let's throw Darren York his flowers. I will now throw those flowers your way. You can't talk about that relationship and not mention right. you know, the huge role that he's going to play in this. So. Right. Already has. Already already has. It's shown the development with these players and will continue to do so. No, 100%. Yeah. All right. So some fun. I, we're getting into some final thoughts, of course, but uh, – what is your, I mean, we talked about, we talked about it earlier. Seth Jarvis. I mean, you talked about it a little bit. You got any more thoughts to share on him? He's, he's the main, he's been the main thought of the summer. I mean, do you yeah. have, what, yeah. what are your predictions for his season? I mean, is there any, I mean, he's so surprising with everything he does. <laughs> let, me, let me go back to why was there anybody worried about, uh, like, <laughs> you know, like all summer long, if, if I show, if I could show you, and I've deleted like all of them, thankfully now. When, when's he getting signed? Is it going to get offer sheeted? And I'm like, are you, what? Oh, what my God. Oh, my like, word. This isn't just, like, fans who have my number. This is, like, I'm like, what are you, why would you even think this? I'm like, I'm like, look, they don't let me in on these things, but I will be the last <laughs> person on planet Earth if he doesn't get a deal done with the Canes. Uh, but my prediction for him, I'm going to, I'm going to go with, and this is not a cop-out answer, but I, I will expect the exact same season out of him what I saw last year. Only little things will start to round into form. Like little things you won't 
you don't pick up right away, but like he wants to get better on faceoffs and take faceoffs when he's killing penalties. And you'll see him do that. He's the 30 goal scorer in this league now. He's going to be a marked man for it, but I think he's up because he's going to keep going to the front of the net. Not afraid to go there. You talked about the guy who's going to go to the front of the net and bounce pucks off of. It's him. It's all, it's all five foot eleven. I'm being very generous. If you're watching this, Seth, <laughs> <laughs> five foot eleven, Seth Jarvis going to the front. The Harvard educated man. Uh, and I, again, I, I think he's a thirty goal guy. Um, I, I hate to go thirty thirty because I think that he could be a, a seventy point player, but. I think that he's definitely. I've, I've got him. I've got him inked in for thirty thirty, and you know that's that's one of those things where he's just going to keep getting better and smarter at the game, and he's going to start doing little things, and he's going to be. I, I'm going to bring up a name, and he's not as irritating as this, but his plateau, his career path, could be Brad Marchand, like with what he can do, with okay. his. Game. Um, I don't think he's – and he does have that annoying tendency to him. He will, He doesn't go to the roles, but a, a good kind of annoying. He doesn't go to that length of, you know, Marchand where he goes, but when he really starts to figure it out, like that's – It's I, one I, of those – you hate playing against him, but when he's yeah. on your team. Mm-hmm. Honestly, uh, there's, not, there's nothing that I can say that I will limit what Seth Jarvis will, will turn into. Same thing with Sebastian Ajo. You know, I, I see these lists come out, and he's listed, you know, here or there. Like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I watch him every night, and I watched how just hard he competes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, but how hard he competes, and he keeps wanting to take step forward, step forwards. And I'm going to say this, and it's, it's maybe it's not unfair anymore, but this team is judged by how these guys show up in the playoffs now. Because in the regular mm-hmm. season, I think we all know what they're going to do. Yeah. Now this team is going to be all right. When you are done with game 82, how do you play in the next? And what it, if you go seven, it's what, 28 games to win the Stanley Cup? Well, hopefully it doesn't take that many. I don't know if my voice can hold up for that long. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind. Uh, that, being, that being said, you know, what do you do? You're judged on those, those 28 games, those four series. That's, that's where this group is now. And Which I think goes back to those two guys we talked about earlier with Svechnikov mm-hmm. and Natchez is two guys that we really want to see step up in playoffs because you've seen Aho do it. Jarvis did it a little quieter this last this last playoffs, but you had other guys step up for that. So he was still doing his thing, injured, did best he could. But two names, everyone was like, I need to see Natchez and I need to see Svech more. So it ties back to what you said then is that's when we want that. We know what they could do. We've seen their overtime shows. We've <laughs> seen their great goals behind the – like. Go the lacrosse. We've seen all of that in the regular season. All the Canes fans are like, "This is great. Give it to us at the end of the season, and we're going to be even happier." <laughs> yeah. By the way, if this league was three on three, Marty Natchez would be my first pick in any fantasy hockey draft. Just so we're all clear on that. Sorry, percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. So I so I have to ask you a couple questions, Mike. So first off, just very quick, Amy, how are you feeling about him this season? I know it was the season he wanted, but we all hope that he does. Have the season we saw two years ago, we did get over 40 points. How do you feel about him coming into the season? And two, when are the Kings fans expecting Kings cast to be back for its first episode of this year? Because I know everyone is foaming at the mouth for you and Shane R. Willis to be back. Uh, that's Venmo Shane R. Willis, and he'll give you the answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, there, there have been a in the summertime is weird because, uh, like I of said, course. this was a this was a Difficult summer for me. I had to be home uh, pretty much all of July, and then Shane all, has all of his his camps that start popping up in August. So he's busy oh, skydiving, man. Oh, yeah, and, and it's, uh, I was out of town when he went skydiving. Lucky for me, and lucky for the <laughs> earth, and uh, whoever <laughs> had to jump with me. Plus, I had to explain drag coefficient to somebody because somebody told me, like, you know, if you drop a feather and you drop a rock, they fall to the earth to the same. Yes, they do, but it's drag coefficient. So if there's more mass, oh, it will hurdle to the earth quicker than Mike. The- I finished my homework an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm to explain that for those out there. Uh, so, but we are we are set to be back on track. Um, much like James Bond, we will return very soon, and uh, I will put it out on the cesspool that is uh, social media. Sorry about that. That's how we. I know that's how we communicate, but that's how I feel about it right now. Get me through the political season. I'm not a political person. Please. I, I I don't blame you. And uh, how how are you feeling about KK? Um, I, 
you know what? This is, as much as I talked about Natchez and Sveshnikov, I think this is a big season for Jesperi Kotkaniemi to mm-hmm. just find out what are you in the league. Um, you know, it's we talk about uh, how Svech is the number two pick in the draft. Well, Jesperi Kotkaniemi was number three. Um, sometimes you get guys who it's not their fault where they get drafted and it's nope. not their fault that they get paid and anything like that because we all would take that money too. You know, that's, that's, that's how I look at it. In the situation here, though, for me, it's it's what's his role. And I don't want to say that his time in Montreal did stunt his growth, but I think it did because if you're top three for a Canadian team and you're not a superstar right away, I mean, the knives are out. And I see it every time he goes back there. You know, he could be on a, a 12-game heater for points or he could not have a point in 40 games and he's the guy they're all in front of uh, in his locker. And he answers every question uh, like a like a, a true pro. I think for me this year, it's he, does he find out what his game is? And the more I watched him, and watch him last year, especially towards the end, he was physical. He could get nasty yeah. and some hits down. So does he turn into a, a two-way center or – maybe a shutdown guy and, and embrace that role. Because look, everybody wants to score goals in this league. That's fun. And that's how you really get a t-shirt with your likeness holding a, a bag of money on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in this situation, uh, I think it comes down to, does he find out what his role is? Does he embrace it? Does he turn into it? Because I think that he could be one of those guys who does he have the ability to be a top six player? Yeah. He got drafted that way, but is his role now in the league as time goes on? Is he a guy who can carve it out and be a, you know, a top nine guy, a, a third line center who's, you know, got that offensive spark to him, but he's turning into a really good defensive player. I think that's that's going to be what we're going to see. And, hey. and if he finds that role, we'll get there. But I, he's one of those guys who I've been around him enough. And, you know, I, I'm, I always do that. We're not supposed to pull for guys or cheer. He's a guy I pull for. Because I think he got put in a circumstance any anyone on planet Earth would have done the exact same thing. And then everybody is waiting to, you know, especially if they are bilingual in a province known as Quebec, they don't want to see him succeed. I want to see him succeed as a player. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. I, this is I mean, yeah, it's I mean, also that, not it's... for lack of effort. Like if you watched him last oh, season, okay. as frustrating as it was, he hit everything but the back of the net at some times. He was in the right position. It would just hit off the outside of the post, inside of the post, goalie's pad. He was right there. And, like, he made up for it with his defensive abilities, which is why everyone was like, you know, he's giving yep. you the Jordan Stahl effect just in a younger version. Yeah, so also, is he going to stay the Jordan Stahl effect? Is he going to find we'll, himself? We'll, we'll see. That's Again, that's, that's, I think, a question that gets answered this year. And, you know, just – Unlock it and uh, stack up points, and and that's what he has to do. And if you know he's a guy who at the end of the year looks down and he's you know twenty and thirty, you get fifty points out of him. Would be upset. I mean, raise your raise your hand if you wouldn't take that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, honestly, if tertiary assists counted, he probably would have had at least like fifty points last year. So it's just <laughs> uh, way to use tertiary assists, Zach. Something I haven't <laughs> haven't stumped for since we were on the playground. So thank you. <laughs> You're more than welcome. On that one. <laughs> oh, Mike, uh, I know we're we're milking you for your time. Uh, we, uh, as always, uh, it, it's always a blast having an honorary fourth co-host at this point <laughs> here with us. Uh, before we let you go, uh, real quick, probably way too early Metro season predictions. Oh gosh! Oh, no worse than second. Um, you know, I, I think New Jersey took some steps forward. And we'll see what they do because, you know, they got a goalie and they signed a pretty damn good defenseman. They actually have two pretty good defensemen who used to play for the Carolina Hurricanes up there. Uh, I'll see what Sheldon Keith can do behind the bench there. Uh, any Peter Laviolette coach team is a playoff team in my mind, uh, especially a team with that experience. But, you know, the Rangers didn't do anything really this offseason to add to what they mm-hmm. had. And the season they had last year was great. I can't see them really – replicating it, although they do have a pretty darn good goalie in Igor Shesterkin, as we found out. He can not flip a switch, but he can he can take over games. But at the same time, I I, I don't think I don't think of Shesterkin the way that I thought of Marty Brodeur, Patrick Waugh, Dominic Hasek. I mean he's oh, elite. Vasilevsky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Vasilevsky's the other guy with the team in front of Vas. He was really damn good too. Uh, and they kept them together for a while. So I those are the three horses. I think it's it's the Rangers the Canes and New Jersey, put them in a bag and shake it out and however they show up, uh, that's fine. I think the Canes can win the division. 
uh, no worse than second. Uh, I, I kind of expect it to be a, maybe Jersey catches everybody. They win the division because they might get off to a good start. Jersey, Carolina, and the Rangers, or Carolina, Jersey, and the Rangers, one, two, three. I'll keep the Rangers in the top three. And after that, Washington added – Washington's going to be a weird chemistry experiment to me. They added yeah. all these pieces. You know, Pierre-Luc Dubois, for me, he's almost the anti Esperi Code Kenyemi because, like, everybody's tried to tell me how great you are, and they've given you these chances, and you get built for Darcy Kemper. Um, he's also he's for also, nothing for like, nothing like no no retention. You know, we'll take the whole contract. Yeah. Like, but that's yeah. I mean, that's it. I'm, but I'm guessing I'm guessing that you know. All right, now he's going to have a winger like Ov, and we'll see what he can do with you know with that kind of firepower next to him. So uh, Washington oh, is going to be interesting to me. We already talked oh, about Blue, the Islanders and, and Patrick Waugh. They're just yeah. You better, you better he better hope you don't. Uh, Make him upset. No, no. But you know, they're gonna do they're gonna do, you know, Patrick Waugh things. There's a, a really good general manager now in, in Columbus, but they what a what a heartbreaking off season they've had and, yeah. and we'll see what they overcome uh with that. But they're a team who I think is gonna they're gonna get better. But wow, that's just a you know, I I, I know all of us you, you can't sum up in, in words to me always seem trivial to try to say, you know, we're thinking about or sending prayers or whatever to the, to the Goodrow family. But um, you know, that's that's where you see the hockey world comes together. Uh, Philly is interesting to me now. i got to go back to talking about hockey. Um, but uh, yeah. Philly is one of those teams where, you know, I, I love what Keith Jones and, and you know, Danny Briere are building there and, and then John Tortorella, and they're going to be tough to play against. But one, two, three um, – uh, the cop out is take your pick. You guys can slot however you want. If you want to hang a another uh, banner up for winning a division for the Kings, you can go right ahead. But if Nashville is listening, I'm going to stay away from that. Yeah, I do follow social media. I told you. Uh, oh God. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. So, thanks, guys. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. We we look thanks, forward to hearing you back on our TVs, on our live streams, all of that fun stuff. You know, coming out live of the we can't. We can't say that we didn't hear this, but, you know, it's not going to be the PNC Arena anymore. We're all aware the leak was real. We'll hear you live I'm out of Lenovo. My connection is going on. <laughs> <laughs> the letters are off the building, Mike. It's not a secret anymore. <laughs> Watch this all get thrown back in our faces, too. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, they were just putting new letters on our. Mike, body. before we let you go, where can I've the people? I've never seen anything official, so I don't. Okay, whatever rumors you're talking about. Let's Mike, go. before we let you go, where can people find you on socials? We'll, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> it's because yeah, uh, he on, wants people um, to find him. <laughs> on Twitter or X or whatever, it's at Mike Maniscalco, uh, and on Instagram, it's Mike Man seventy five. Okay, I love talking with Mike. Um, so happy we had him on. Obviously, this episode's going to be a little bit longer. Um, but guys, we could talk to him for hours, and I'm sure you guys could listen to him. Probably. We didn't even get to any of his stories. We just got no, to his opinions on things. Um, we'll, we'll have but... him on later. I can't imagine this is the last time we're ever going to talk to that man. Let me just tell you the absolute journey we went to to finally make this happen. <laughs> yes, if you guys notice, if you're watching, if you notice. We don't look the same in our videos um, because we did when we pre we recorded the first part of the episode. It wasn't exactly we had technical difficulties, timing, all of this stuff. So this is recording with Mike is a little bit different time, but you know we hold out for the great Mike Maniscalco because what a better way to really start season four with a great guest that we're all very familiar with and we love talking hockey with, and it's just laughs and smiles all around. Um, you know, we're starting yeah. off this this season of the Surge Cast with some pretty significant kind of boosts. Not not mm -hmm. not to call the guests, you know, just just number boosters or whatever. But no, we we've had some great guests on, and I know we've got some great things scheduled too. So like, well, we know you guys are tired of hearing us over the summer just talk about whatever news we could come up with about <laughs> right. <laughs> so now you get to hear about people actually. I mean, I, we can't forget we had Doug Wharf on here. Like, yeah, you. You get to hear from people that are like course, yeah. actively in the running show day to day telling you, oh, yeah, this is what we're preparing. This is what you should expect. This is what I'm looking forward to as a fan and someone that worked with the Canes. So, right. I mean, we're so excited. We're so excited for the 
future guests as well. You guys are going to be really excited when we announce those. Um, but yeah, thanks for sticking with us for a little bit longer of an episode. Zach, where can people find you and where can people find the network? Uh, yeah, you can find me on X at once your Zach. You can, um, Follow the network at the hockey podcast network.com. Big shout out to THPN for all they do for having us on there. They have a bunch of podcasts for all the teams and even, uh, you know, Terry Ryan from Shores is on there too. So there you go. So yeah, and, uh, click on the term in bio. You can find all my articles and the podcast stuff that I do. So never, never not busy. So yeah. Cat, <laughs> uh, where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twix, Twitter, X, whatever you call it at the Kaniac Chick, and you can find me on TikTok at KVT Hunter 74 um, Bailey, where can they find the pod, and where can they find you? Well, if we're talking about the pod first, uh, you can find us over on X, Instagram, and YouTube at The Surgecast. Uh, for our YouTube channel, it is just The Surgecast. If you're watching this on YouTube, hi, hello, how you doing? Uh, be sure to hit, click that big red subscribe button down below, as well as that thumbs up notification and that bell notification icon so you never miss an episode. Uh, we have link trees in all of our bios if you're looking where to stream the podcast. If you're listening, maybe not a watcher. Uh, so be sure to check out those link trees. As far as I go, you can find me over on X at Bailey Curtis. And that is Bailey with two Y's. Find me over on Instagram at Bailey Lynn Curtis. We are almost at 150 subscribers on YouTube. So if we get to, let's say, 200, we might do a giveaway. <gasps> Who knows? Ooh. Some incentive. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. so. <laughs> Our intern might get paid a little something too. You never oh know. my gosh, the unpaid intern. <laughs> yeah, thanks poor guys. Guy. We, poor, poor we're, guy. <laughs> we're so excited. Uh, again, season four is going to be the best season yet. We're so excited. Hockey is about. We're Cam counting down the day. Yeah, we're Cam counting Ward, down. So, like, Cam Ward days. You do, get, days. You Cam do days. get to see people in Carolina Hurricanes uniforms this week, though. So that is something very exciting. Guys, hockey's back. Hockey's back. Thank God. So from all of us at the Surge Cast, I'm Kat. <laughs> I'm Bailey. I'm Zach. And thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you next time at the Surge Cast. Bye, guys. Hockey.